Welcome to Empowering Lives with Purpose, and I'm your host, Kimberly Hobbs. I am the founder of Women World Leaders, and I am always happy to be here with you, ladies. And today, we have a special guest with us, and let's welcome Sarah Fraser. Welcome, Sarah. Hi, Kimberly. I am so excited to be here. I'm looking forward to our conversation. I am too. I am too. And ladies, today, we are talking about confidence. How many of us lack confidence? Today, Sarah's going to share her story and we get to hear from her about that word. And then we're going to talk about it a little bit. And hopefully God will speak to your heart about that word today. We all need more confidence, right? God is here to inspire us, strengthen us, and encourage us through his word. And many times he uses different people to share stories of encouragement and how they progress through something to help us have an idea for our own life and apply it to our own life. And I know that you are here with a purpose from God because he has put a purpose in each of our hearts and a plan. God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. That's Philippians 2.13. So as we start here today, uh, Sarah, I just want to tell uh, you all a little bit about Sarah. She's from West Virginia. And although I don't hear a West Virginia accent in your voice, Sarah, but uh, (laughs) let me tell you a little bit about Sarah. She's an author and a Bible study mentor, and a wife of Jason for almost 19 years. She's a mother of five children. She's a busy lady, and their ages are 15 down to eight. So we know she's still very busy. She's a former homeschooling mama with a background in missions work and biblical teaching. And her passion is to encourage women to study God's word and grow closer to him. So you are right at the right place, Sarah. We are so glad you're here with us today to join us. Confidence, that word confidence, the word of God is our most powerful tool to teach us, encourage us, and inspire us. And we all know that life is hard, full of stresses and situations and even relationships in it that can get us down. So what can we do when the voices in our heads are telling us that we're not good enough? God's word says, for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but it gives us power, love, and self-discipline. That's 2 Timothy 1.7. And so as we begin, Sarah is going to share a little bit about her story of lacking confidence in her marriage, in her future, and having children. So Sarah, can you please share with us about your story? Thank you so much, Kimberly, for once again having me on here. Um, a lot I will comment real fast. A lot of people say that I don't have that thick West Virginia accent. And I think it's because I grew up in more of the city setting. We have a couple, just maybe one or two major cities in our state. And so I grew up here in in the capital city of Charleston and so in that area. So I don't have that really thick Southern West Virginia accent. My husband, on the other hand, when he gets back home where he's from, um, he definitely starts picking it up a little bit. And I always have to joke with him a little bit about Uh, losing his city accent. So I am so glad to be here to talk about just a little bit about my story. Um, You mentioned I've been married for almost 19 years, and then we have five children. So we have three that we um, have biologically, and then our youngest two are actually adopted. They were adopted, I'm trying to think of the years. It's been at least eight years and six years. So um, eight years ago, we adopted our daughter. And then six years ago, we adopted our son. They are um, 
both internationally adopted from the country of China. So um, a lot has changed in eight or six years, <laughs> COVID and all of that. So um, I'm not sure what the international adoption world looks like, but at the time when we adopted them, China um, was a great fit for us as a family. And so um, I wanna share a little bit about our daughter's adoption uh, when we first signed up to adopt her, you fill out a lot of paperwork. And so when we filled out all the paperwork, we came to the section where you were open to certain medical diagnosis. And so my husband, who's in the medical field, was able to kind of, we walked through that without much research because he was able to say, well, this is this and that. And we sat down, but we really approached that piece of paperwork very prayerfully. And we said, what kind of special needs, what kind of medical diagnosis do we think we can handle? And do we not think we can handle? And so we did, did the little list and uh, sent it off. And fast forward several months later, we were matched with a little girl and we were told that she had minor special needs. And so in our mind, minor meant not huge. And so we said, yes, we want to adopt her. Um, we asked a few questions, but we didn't really have a good idea of what her special need, you know, was. And so we were a little confused with some of the information, but we just knew that this was the little girl God wanted us to adopt. So we flew to China and I'll never forget stepping into that as a government office and being handed a little girl. And even though she was two and at the time she weighed maybe 20 pounds, um, she felt so heavy to me mm. and I couldn't figure out why. And so finally we get her back to the hotel room. Um, I'm, I'm all doing all the layers of clothing. <laughs> she had like five layers of clothing on and I realized how tiny she is. But then we realized that her special needs were not indeed minor. They were major. And mm -hmm. we just struggled. Um, I struggled a lot with what did this mean for our marriage? Now we have a special needs daughter. I know that that takes a toll on your marriage. And then I, at the time, my three biological children were um, six, four, and two. So they were not very old at all. And I felt overwhelmed already as a mom mm -hmm. and adding a special needs child with major special needs. Not only that, unknown. We had no idea what was wrong. Um, and so bringing her home, I remember after we brought her home, I remember just day after day feeling that sort of inadequacy mm -hmm. and that inability to know what to even do next. I was so tired. Um, I had never, I don't, I didn't know what to do about therapy or doctors. And of course we took her to the doctors right away and all the tests were normal. And um, I have to say, even eight years later, the Lord has brought her so far mm. yet we still have no diagnosis. Wow. It is a medical mystery. And at the time, I thought for sure, if I had a diagnosis, we would have a plan and we could fix this. But there was no diagnosis. Um, there was no indication of anything wrong, although she was physically unable to even walk or hold her head up. Um, all of those things when we first got her, there, all the tests came back normal. And we couldn't figure out what, what was going on. And so I just felt that the Lord had kind of pushed me in a corner. And then I felt that he had left. Mm. And I know in my head, I knew that he didn't leave. And I struggled really hard to have the faith. But I, I have to admit that was a really, really difficult time because up until this point, all my life, I've been able to see a problem and take care of it. I've been able to overcome obstacles. I could list a whole bunch of obstacles I overcame, you know, in my early years. And then now suddenly there was something in front of me that there was no fixing. Wow. And it just felt very discouraging for me. And I just felt like, as you mentioned, we all feel like we're not enough. Mm. And that was the overwhelming feeling that I had. 
when our daughter was first brought home that I wasn't going to be enough. Mm. And I didn't know what to do um, as far as my own confidence goes. I just, I, I went to the Lord and I said, Lord, I can't do this. But then I, I just felt like my prayers were hitting the ceiling. Yeah. And so it was just, um, it was a deep time of grieving what I thought life would look like, mm -hmm. accepting what was now a reality in our life and wrestling with God during those, mm -hmm. those times of, you know, you, we had no doubt that God had called us to adopt. We had zero doubt. I, even when I was struggling, I knew that this was something from God because I knew he had called us to this. And I knew this particular child was supposed to be ours. And so I, even though I struggled with a lot of doubts in a lot of areas, I really clung to the fact that God had opened so many doors for us and answered so many prayers for us to adopt this little girl that I just tried to keep on reading my word, reading his word and praying and just seeking him through this really hard time. Oh, amen. Amen. And I'm sure there's a lot of listeners right now relating to what you may have felt. You know, how, how do you receive this child and say, no, I, I'm not adequate to take care of, of her and send her back? No, you believed God called you to that purpose to adopt this little girl. You bring her home, but yet you lacked the confidence of the strength of what it entailed. It was huge in front of you, right? And and ladies, sometimes your your situation may not be like Sarah's, but there are times in our life when something in front of us is such a big monster to us. Like, how do I tackle this? And it affects, it has trickling effects, right? Like you said, what would this do to your marriage? What would this do to the other children? What what did this mean? God, if I'm not strong enough to handle this. I don't have the confidence in myself. What does this mean, God? So Sarah, tell me and these listeners, in what specific ways did God provide for you and your family, your entire family during this time? So one of the things that I struggled with is that I wasn't enough. I didn't feel like I was enough for my husband or my children or this situation with our, with our daughter. And so one of the ways that I ended up, um, finding help was just reaching out. And the very first thing that we did is we signed her up for um, our state calls at birth to three, which is this intervention for children from birth to three years old. And it's free and they come into your house and they provide any kind of uh, services that you need. Um, when we first got her, she didn't know how to chew. I don't think she had ever had solid foods. Um, she drank from a bottle. So she was two years old. Um, a little over two. And so we were trying to transition her to table food and she was out. So we had a speech feeding therapist come in and we had um, a physical therapist because like I said, she was two, but she could, she had about the ability of about a nine month old. And so, um, so we had a physical therapist and then we had a developmentalist that would kind of help cognitively like figure out where she is. So um, I remember one of the therapists came in and she, she hugged me and said, you are doing such a great job. Uh -huh. And I just, the tears welled up in my heart, in my mind, because I think I was just having a really bad day. And those feelings of inadequacy just were overwhelming. And she looked at me and she said, you're doing a really good job. And I said, oh, but she's not doing this or we're struggling with this. And she goes, but look, you're, you're getting her help and here's the progress. She was able to kind of let me pull back and see you have made progress. And, and, um, just having that kind of encouragement, um, our church very much surrounded us during that time. Um, and just provided, especially those first few months, just provided meals or just, you know, offered to watch our other children. Mm -hmm. um, the Lord just provided really tangible things for us. So we mm -hmm. had the right kind of um, help with her therapist and we had the right kind of support with our family and our friends. 
And then a couple years later, God was able to connect us with a, with a specialist that has been so incredibly life-giving to us in our journey with our daughter medically. And um, we actually just saw him last week for a follow-up and he spends about 45 minutes during the visit. If you can imagine a busy doctor specialist takes that much time. He talked to my daughter. Um, She's nonverbal, so she's not going to communicate back, but he talked to her uh, very respectively. um, And then he answered all of my questions and Mm -hmm. he is just really hopeful with a lot of medical stuff going forward. And that was just last week, but we met him when she was about uh, three or four years old. And I remember driving back cause it's about three hour drive from where he is and where we live. And I remember driving back. I'll never forget this. And I was crying mm. and we were in Ohio actually. And we were looking at the cornfields and I remember thinking of how God gives us what we need Amen. and how God provided for me at that time. Um, we didn't have a diagnosis, but we had hope for, for that diagnosis. So God's provision was just everywhere throughout that whole first few years. And since then, since then, I'm on the lookout all the time. Wait, this is God's provision. This is God's provision. So that's so beautiful. And he does provide, he does provide when we don't believe in ourselves that we can do something. God is right there. Just look to him and ask him. And he, he did, he came through for you. He provided community for you with your church family therapy for you and your husband and and your daughter and the family. And he was giving you courage through encouragement. We don't know how far our encouragement goes, right? Until just listening to your story and knowing that little bit of encouragement, God put that woman there to tell you you're doing a great job. And when you're trying so hard, right, ladies, we try so hard to do the right thing. And that little bit just sends us soaring. And God provided for you in that way. That's beautiful, Sarah. So he most definitely provides for those who love him and follow his commandments, ladies. He truly brought help when Sarah needed it. He's going to bring help when you need it. And 2 Corinthians 9, 8 says, and God is able, God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things and at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Sarah was called to be a mom to this little girl. Do you think God is going to let her flounder? No. He said, you will abound in every good work. Sarah, you are on your way to just being able to conquer what the enemy tried to destroy in a relationship with a beautiful daughter that God gave to you and your husband. So now let's talk about your surrender, Sarah. So what was your surrender? I think those first couple years with her, I was striving so hard. As you said, we try so hard to do the right thing and to, to, to be what God wants us to be. And when I got to the end of myself and realized, no, indeed, I am not enough for this. God just reminded me over and over again in his word, through messages, like you said, through encouragement, the truth is, no, you're not, but I am enough. Mm-hmm. And he was the one who gave me the strength every day. I look at those days when I had two two-year-olds and a four and a six-year-old. And I think, oh, my heavens, how did I even stay awake during the day? And I I attribute it to that daily strength that the Lord provides for us and that daily wisdom that he provides. Mm-hmm. My job isn't striving to be better or to do more or to accomplish, you know, what this grand thing, overcome this obstacle. No, God says, I am going to do that. You're going to surrender. And my favorite story in the Bible about this is the children of Israel when they face the Red Sea. 
Mm-hmm. And God said, I'm going to deliver you. They had the Egyptians behind them about to kill them. They have this huge body of water there. They have no boats. I doubt any of them knew how to swim. And right. so they, God says, here's what you're going to do. And in Exodus, it says that he said, here's what you're going to do. You're going to be still. You're going to stand still and watch. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times we want God to just part the Red Sea for us, right? Make it easy. But God sometimes says, I'm going to walk through the hardship with you. I'm going to make a way. It might not look. I don't think they imagined that was the way that God was going to rescue them. But God does. He holds our hand. He's with us. And when we surrender, then He that opens up the possibility and the opportunity for God to really work in our lives. Amen, Sarah. Amen. You released your control and you surrendered it to God's control and using the children of Israel as that example too. You know, they took their eyes off of what was going on around them. They had to, and they had to put their eyes on the Lord. And that's what a surrendered life looks like, that um, you renew your minds. You take the control out of what your mind is telling you from what you see, right? Because we see a lot of things and that can turn us sideways. But when we renew our minds, we're transformed by Christ uh, the clearer our life is going to become in our thoughts. And the God's word says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's Romans 12 too. So God was building your confidence, Sarah. And I, I just love your story. And he did that based on who he is and his teaching, right? So how did your confidence change after you first adopted Leanne versus how it is now? I think that at the beginning, um, I, my confidence was in my ability to, mm-hmm. uh, to fix the situation. Then God led me to a situation where I wasn't going to be able to fix this. And instead of him fixing it, he actually revealed so many truths about himself that allowed me to see that I don't have to have confidence in myself. That, you know, when we first adopted her, my mind went to the future. What is the future going to be like? I don't know. I had so much doubt about the future. I had no confidence that I was going to make it to where I thought I needed to be. And God said, you need to step back and know that, A, I'm with you here in the present. And also, I have the future. Mm -hmm. And so my confidence shifted from my abilities to God's character and his plan and his purpose for my life is not the end, but the journey, right? God's purpose and plan for us. Of course, we all know we're headed to heaven. That's our place, right? But God's purpose and plan is the every day right now. What does he mm-hmm. want me to do right now? And for me, it was the daily practice of reading, Bible reading and prayer. Just the daily practice, whether I felt good or I felt bad, I knew I was going to read God's word. I knew I was going to pray. And I wanted to anchor my myself in the truth of his word because his word reveals his character Mm. and that was where my confidence shifted not in my ability not even in my well i've done things before and i can accomplish no god said i'm going to be your confidence Mm. because i am the only one who is not he's the only one who's not going to let us down he's the only one and he proved that over and over and over again um, in my life. And he continues <laughs> every time I yeah. face something and I try to, co- you know, come at it with my own confidence. He kind of reminds me quietly, Hey, I'm going to handle this. You surrender, surrender that control. Let me, let me work. So I love that. I love that. Wow. So I'm sure that God has given you a rock to stand on in his word through this whole time. Something that you uh, say, okay, God, and you recite that verse. What is that scripture verse that is your go-to when you're feeling that you have a lack of confidence going on? Um, So it's Psalm 46, and I want to read verse one through three. God is our refuge and strength 
a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. When I had, when we faced that with our daughter, I felt like my whole world was being turned upside down, like yes. verse two and three describes. But I kept going back to verse one, and verse one is what I repeat to myself. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help. He is present in time and space with me, and he is my refuge and my strength. And I would add, those two things give me confidence. Oh, that's so beautiful. He is our ever present help in times of trouble. So when you're feeling you're lacking confidence, the Bible is filled with scriptures, right, Sarah, as we know, ladies, go to the word when you are feeling inadequate, for any reason, whatever it is, the Bible's filled with scriptures that will bolster your confidence and your self-esteem. I promise you, I lacked it tremendously because I just didn't feel worthy. And my confidence was zero because I made so many mistakes. But I had to realize through the word how much God loves me. You realized in what he provided for you, Sarah, how much he loved you. And he wants you ladies to see yourself the way he sees you, right? And we do that when we read his word, we see the way God views us and it starts to build our confidence. So he wants us to put our identity in him alone because he is the source of our worth. And then we could stand and tell of our true identity in him. And then once that starts happening and that that beautiful self emerges, the one that God created, because he is the one who gave you life. He believes in you. And without him, your, your identity is based on the world. And we know where that's going to bring us, right? Because we can look around us and we see it crumbling. And But when you put your faith and trust in him as your confident leader, guide, the Holy Spirit, you release your control, then you're solely based on, okay, God, I can do all things through you who gives me strength and our confidence builds. And memorizing scriptures, ladies, gives you that power of the word to change your confidence level. So please just remember to go to the scriptures to aid you when you need them the most. Sarah, I just, I love your story. I love how you're able to share it and transparently share that you lack the confidence, but look at what God did in your life. And thank you. Thank you for sharing with us. And so I'm going to ask you right now, if you could um, share with the ladies, because I know that you actually wrote a book that is going to be of help to some of the ladies that might be lacking confidence. And then uh, just tell them how they can reach you, find your book, and then can you close in prayer, please? I would love to. So you can find my book. It's called I Didn't Sign Up for This, How to Rest in God's Goodness When Our Story Shifts. And I know that um, you can get it anywhere online, but if you go to Sarah E. Fraser, Dot com. So Sarah E. Fraser dot com. You'll see links to the book there. You can connect with me on Instagram through there and then even send me a message. If you want to um, chat via email or you have a question, definitely send me an email. I'll, I'll be happy to respond. But thank you so much, Kimberly, for allowing me to share my story and for what you're doing for women all over the world here on this podcast and with all of the things that you um are doing at Women World Leaders. I'm just really, really um, honored that you would have me on. So I'm going to close us in prayer. Amen. Dear Father, thank you so much for Kimberly. We thank you for Women World Leaders and the ministry that you have given them. Continue to bless them, Lord. We pray for the listeners, Lord, right now that might be feeling as if they are facing a Red Sea or something huge and impossible. Let them go to your word, Lord. Let those that are listening know that you care for the individual, the woman who is sitting there feeling all alone. You see her, you know her, you have a plan and a purpose for her life. 
be near to her, Lord. Help her to, to seek you and to trust in you during this difficult time. Lord, I pray that you will have a special blessing on our lives today. Thank you for your love and your grace and your righteousness through Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much for being on today. And ladies, thank you for being on. And you know, if you have any needs and you would like to reach out to us further, we are available here for you at womenworldleaders.com. We have a website set up. There's devotions on there. We have a Facebook group full of devotions every day. We invite you to join in with any of the things that we have open to you. We have Bible studies. We have prayer groups. We have so much going on in this amazing God ministry. And one thing that is very special to our hearts is our Voice of Truth publication that's put out for women by women to bless them. It's full of scriptures. It's full of uh, just so many good nuggets that will encourage your heart every day. A lot of women use this for their devotions every day for uh, their daily devotions. So ladies, you can read it online digitally for free anywhere in the world. And here in the United States, you can get a copy. It's over 100 pages, full color. It is beautiful, written by authors all over the world, compiled just for you. So as we close out today, again, thank you ladies for tuning in from his heart to yours. We are Women World Leaders. All content is copyrighted by Women World Leaders and cannot be used without expressed written consent. God bless each and every one of you. Have a beautiful day. And thank you, Sarah Fraser. Thank you.